take a look <clears throat> here at a chi-square test for independence. This is slightly different than the chi-square test for homogeneity. Uh, in terms of independence, we're trying to see if if subjects from um, some kind of uh, single category are dependent on some type of categorical variable. Um, you're going to see words like, is there a relationship? Does some something depend on something else? Uh, the, the hypotheses here, uh, well, let me put that down. So the big question a lot of times you'll see with this type of test, is there a relationship? That's kind of a good indicator. So the hypothesis, uh, the variables, uh, we're going to assume the variables are independent until we see something that tells us otherwise. Right, so the alternative would be that the variables are not independent. Now we've done independence before when we did like one particular thing versus another particular thing. Um, the, I'm sorry, I'm struggling spelling here. Uh, but this is going to actually take a look at the whole group as a whole, like at the whole chart all at once. The conditions, uh, this is what we're used to, SRS. All expected values greater than or equal to one, and then no more than twenty percent of expected values at less than five. And again, here's the situation. Chances are you're going to be able to put both of those together and say all expected values are greater than or equal to five. That's probably the the, the case. Much like the test for homogeneity yesterday, our degrees of freedom, rows minus one times columns minus one, and the calculator is going to give this to us, uh, but that's a good thing to know maybe for like a multiple choice type question. At the bottom of this page you see kind of a good breakdown of the three different chi-squared tests and when it's appropriate to use which one. So goodness of fit, this is basically when you're going to use the lists, and a lot of times what happens is you're kind of given this percentages, and then that's supposed to characterize the whole population, right? This is what it should look like for the whole population in terms of music preferences, for example. And then somebody does a sample and we see how good does our data fit or how well does it fit, right? And then the homogeneity independence, it's really the same test. It's just we name it something a little bit differently. So the key phrase for homogeneity, we're looking for something like the same, right? Homogeneity, the same versus independence, what I just said above, is there a relationship? We're trying to see uh, in this population, is there some kind of relationship among different variables, the two variables of interest to us? So let's just try one to get the feel for what's going on here. So the National Gun Policy asks people, do you think there should be laws that would ban possession of handguns, except for police and other authorized people? So here are the responses. So basically, we have a two-way table. It's not like this is the given percentage and this is, what it, this is what a sample said. This is one of those two-way tables, right? We have responses versus education level. So here, is there a relationship? So we're doing a chi-squared test for independence. And so our null, uh, I, I realize I wrote that way over there, but, right, this would tell us that response and education level, we assume that they are independent. And then the alternative then is that the response and education level are not independent. All right, uh, real quick check the conditions. It looks like they asked respondents, so I'm not sure. Random, we're going to have to assume. And then we don't have the expected values yet. We've just got some observed values. So we'll come back to the conditions in a minute. I'm going to guess everything's going to be over 5, but 
we'll actually maybe just throw a matrix here. If you're not given a place to put it, <coughs> let's put a matrix for the expected values. And we'll let the calculator, we saw this yesterday, we'll let the calculator do this for us. So go ahead and get stuff set up. <coughs> and then we're going to open up our calculator and use our matrices to, to come out this thing play out. So um, I've got my calculator open, so we'll go to matrix. So we're going to edit matrix A. And this would be... Uh, Five by two, and then just fill in the, the values. So 58, 68, 84, 129, 169, 294, 98, <coughs> 135, 77. I have to go back up. 35. Make sure you type stuff in the right way. All right, so we got ourselves into our matrix quit out of the matrix and then this is just like we did yesterday with the test we're just doing a chi-squared test so there's our chi-squared test and what it's telling us we have to know where the observed values are it's in a and what this again is going to do it's going to put the expected values into b so let's go down here and calculate and what we can see we've got a chi-squared value of 8.53 a p-value, 0.074, so it looks like we're going to fail to reject. Now let's just fill in all the pieces of the puzzle here. So the chi-squared value, um, we're going to end up with this being 8.53, and using an alpha of 0 0.05, you get a p-value that equals 0 .07, 0 0.074, excuse me. So... 0 0.074 is greater than 0 0.05, which means we will fail to reject. Make sure you put the null in here. And so it appears that response and education level are independent. So in other words, just because you have more education doesn't mean that maybe you agree or disagree. You're not more likely to agree or disagree. Uh, according to this particular sample. All right, so let's just go back now. Let's make sure that we fill in all the other pieces. Let's go fill in that expected values chart. So go back to your matrix. Um, and what I do is I just go to edit. <coughs> so we'll pull those values. So take a look at those values. Now we're going to transfer them over. So fill in our expected values chart. We have 47, 69, 86, 127, 187, 176. And you can round to the nearest person. You could round to one or two decimal places. That's really more what's your personal preference. Um, what we can see is I'm writing all these in. Sure enough, all of those expected values, all expected values, got equal to 5. That's great. And then just fill in a couple of these chi squared. So, Observe, 58 minus expected, 47 squared over expected. And then we'll get, just grab the last one. So go to the bottom right corner now. So we have 99 minus 105 squared over 105. And there's that one. So if you want to pause this for a minute, uh, I'm going to pause the video and fill in everything on the next uh, chunk. I'm not going to walk through it as I do it. I'm just going to fill it in for you so you can check that on your own. So here's that test worked out, right? Chi squared test for independence. <coughs> One of the things I forgot to do above, <coughs> then I should go back and fill in with degrees of freedom. I forgot about doing that. Uh, so uh, just squeeze it in here somewhere. Um, degrees of freedom, you had five rows, one column, so four times one is four. But um, I hit the bottom, six degrees of freedom. So station preference and, pref and their political philosophy are independent. They should know, versus they are not. We just put that particular matrix in the calculator right here, run the test, and then I get your chi-squared value of 30.4, which yields a p-value of 0 0.00003, which will lead us to reject the null. 
Uh, so I went ahead and I filled this particular chunk in, went back and looked at that matrix B to fill this in, realized all those expected values are greater than 5. So both my conditions were met. And then I went back and I filled in a couple pieces of the formula. And you're done.